northern New York. I just don't like the weather. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like my, oh, yeah. my husband's I mean, from Vermont, and we'd never go there. It's a beautiful country up there. Yeah. I miss the snow, but it is nicer when you got to go in and out between the house and I the like car. It. I, like it I do it. not miss the snow. I like it when we get four inches and it's, it's the gone by 2 o'clock. <laughs> no, yeah, enough to look at. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pretty in the morning yeah. and gone. A little dog runs out for a little bit, that's it. Well, I think we've got to uh, go one. Uh, so I'll let y'all finish getting settled there and we'll let me <coughs> let us know the countdown when, when y'all are ready if you're settled. So, Brian, we're good, Chris, or banana? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a cup, a gift to you. Oh. To use a. Okay. Good evening. Welcome to the Woodfin Planning Board of Adjustment. Today is December 5th, 2023. Uh, we're going to call this meeting to order. Uh, first, we'll take roll. Um, Mr. Hansen. Here. Ms. Gosnell. Here. Mr. Deroni. Here. Mr. Hopkins. Here. Ms. Overbeck. Here. Mr. Young. Here. Mr. Hayes present. Okay, I'm um, just kindly ask that everybody that is attending this meeting please turn your phone volumes off. And with that, has uh, we're going to go to move to the approval of the agenda. Does anybody have any questions with tonight's agenda? I have a motion. Sir? Second. Second. In favor? Aye. 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 That would be <coughs> approved. Um, next, we're going to move on to C, which is approval of the minutes. Has everybody had a chance to review the October and November meeting minutes? Do we have any questions on either of those? You only got which one? October, she, so we got October, so November still. Still okay. Okay, so we're, we're talking still just working October. on November, so just okay. October tonight. Um, well, that makes it easier. I don't, we can do one at a time then. Um, do we have a motion to approve the minutes from October 3rd, 2023? So, so move. Second. Everybody in favor? Aye. 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 And we'll have November for you next time. Okay. Uh, takes us to the public comments. Do we have anybody? Uh, I know we have other in general public comments on us. Yeah. That's, but it's for the agenda item tonight. So, but uh, for general public comment, no. I think okay. we have one person for the discussion item. Okay, and then move on to letter E, unfinished business. Adoption of the Woodfin Together Comprehensive Plan. Presentations were by Nate Baker from Quantum Consultants and Christy Carter, Traffic Planning and Design. So I'm going to turn this over to Ricky at this point, I guess. Yeah, uh, so the consultants weren't on deck, but that's... Uh, Okay, so as you remember, recall last month, we introduced the draft comprehensive plan to y'all. Uh, I know a lot of discussion surrounded the implementation matrix or the items, how we will actually move forward. Uh, so I did print that out for you. That's the black and white copies on the desk for you. That's the five last pages that were added. It's got an eight on it. I think it'll probably be retitled chapter six. Um, so hopefully you had a chance to review that uh, from Thursday's email last week. Um, also for y'all in the color on the ledger size paper, I just wanted to print out some of the larger maps and details so you could look at those tonight. Uh, it's like the future land use map, which is a very top sheet. Uh, then all the other smaller maps in the back, which were those like target areas along the river, uh, the large parcel on Beaverdown Creek, as well as, you know, the Greenway bike map as well that would include the transportation chapter itself. So I'll just give you all a minute to kind of flip through the materials unless you have a specific question about an item.
Yeah, I can bring them up. Yeah, I probably should do that. Let me get out of here. There's the future land use map. If there's a particular area on this map y'all want to zoom in on, the PDF actually has a little bit better resolution. I think we had a good luck with printing a, like a 24 by 36 um, out on this, uh, at least zooming in. So let me know if there's a particular area you want to look at. Yes, ma'am. Ricky, uh, I'm having a bit of a hearing issue today. So okay. if you could be sure to project when you speak. Yeah, okay, I'll be, I'd like to. <laughs> I don't, is that even working? That well, it was unplugged <laughs> earlier today, so we had to crawl around to, there was a bunch of stuff unplugged <laughs> okay. in here. I think we okay. were, were trying to figure out what's going okay. on. That's fine, I'll, I'll, I try not, <laughs> Scott was telling me I was a little bit okay. quiet on the phone today too. <clears throat> So I'll, I'll roll on down here just a little bit further on another map. Yeah, I can come back to it. So you'll probably look through. We can talk through these colors, the different ones like commercial, industrial, the different residential districts if you want to. Has there been any changes? since the last version we saw? Uh, actually, I haven't seen a lot of changes. I'd made a, a couple recommendations on the, the land use map that I still uh, did see occurred. So we're going to check back in with them on the f future land use map. I just very, very small areas that I had kind of enumerated. Um, and I think the other one big comment that I think we were waiting to see some for was the west side of the river. I didn't see anything as far as addressing land use, pedestrian, transportation on the west side of the river. And I know that one or two members of the steering committee had pointed that out at our last meeting. And so we're not seeing that either on that map, on any of the maps actually. Um, that's something that's been kind of a little bit of a concern to me and Shannon too, is we want to make sure we include that side of the river. So would we be able to send our recommendation with comments, I guess? Is that how we would do it? Yeah. And so, Shannon, so I want to make sure. Do we need them to approve this tonight, or are we going to keep this open? I know that we were pushing hard last month. but We don't need you to approve it tonight. If you want to take more time reviewing it, um, we just want to keep – focus on it um, because we don't want to delay unnecessarily. So um, the, the consultant is uh, the draft that is posted will be updated. I mean, I think we will see at least one, probably two, maybe even three updates to that draft. So some of the changes that we've already suggested, they're not reflected yet because the consultant is collecting comments from different stakeholders, from council members, from staff. We're all making comment. You all, any recommendations or suggestions you have will get carried over to the consultant. So then they can do a more comprehensive update to the draft, repost okay. it, and then the public gets to review this updated draft. I think that's great. Yeah. Um, do you know if, the, if have people actually been using that link to make suggestions? I've wondered if... if I know the initial before we had the... Um, Survey Monkey link that we did get a few comments on that that we forwarded on to the consultants. Now right. the link now goes straight to uh, Quantum, so I'm not intermediating that at all. Okay. Yeah. So there's there's a variety of ways people can make comment. They can email me or Ricky directly. They can email you, and you can pass on those comments to us. Whatever. We'll we'll take the feedback in any way that somebody wants to share it. Um, the online option is just, it works well for some people, but not everybody, so. No, I know. You're not but limited to that. You can certainly contact us. What about recommendations that we might make tonight? Is that, that's be on record, so we don't need to worry about sending you an email? Correct. Yeah. We'll be taking notes tonight. Yeah. 
So we're just going to review. We're not going to take it any further. You can. I mean, if you feel comfortable and you're ready to recommend approval, um, then you're certainly free to do that. Um, I would expect approval maybe with some conditions or with the condition that, you know, for instance, as Ricky mentioned, the west side of the river gets looked at or maybe you have something more specific you want to share. Um, but you don't have to. You, I don't want you to feel pressured to act tonight. Um, we just want to, like I said, just keep, keep focus on this. And you mentioned you expect a few updates, and you said there's already been updates, but that's we don't have access to that right now, right, at this point? I, I don't think the draft, yes, the draft has been updated once, but I don't know if it's been posted. We may have received the first draft and made comments, and then they updated it and posted it. I mean, so I, would I, feel think more comfortable. I think what's posted now is the second draft. Okay. I mean, I would feel so more what, Ricky said is second draft? Yeah. Okay. But wasn't most of that just the last few pages, not as opposed to, I didn't see much change in the original draft. Well, I mean, what the original draft that you saw was actually the second version of the draft. Okay. So we didn't post it for public consumption until we had one swipe at it. Um, and then it got posted, missing the appendix, and now that appendix has been shared with you. And has also been posted publicly. Yes. Too. Yes. Yes. There may have been some tweaks in there. It's a little hard sometimes. It's a big enough document. It's hard to know what change between that draft and another. I know I made a lot of comments. Some of those may have been addressed already. I'm not sure. When they post uh, the next revision, do you think they can put a um, what's new or release notes kind of thing that would say here? That's a. I think that's a great idea. Like here's some of the changes. It's a little more the work for them, part. but at least yeah. pe people would know where to go look. Or we could summer. We could summarize it. It doesn't have to be. Yeah. Just kidding. I had a question about 10% um, uh, residential unit designation for 80% of median income. Is that median income of the town, median income of the county, or median income of the state or nation? Typically, it's going to be of the metropolitan area, so it would okay. be the actual area. It wouldn't be the state. It would be our local area. Okay. But they don't have data on Woodfin. Gotcha. I, this may be jumping the gun a bit, but Sh Shannon, how do you see us going forward once we've come to, you know, believe we've got a final product or close to it? How do you see us? Because um, there's a lot of reference to, um, well, I mean, maybe even different council members playing different roles to lead, you know, or how, you know, how do you see us going forward? I, like in how to implement the plan? Yeah, well, how do we make it happen? <laughs> uh, so I think that the, the, one of the pieces that was missing was that implementation plan. And I think that's a really important piece of a comprehensive plan because it takes some of those goals and policies and actually puts action steps to them. So um, I think once you all feel like the vision is there, uh, and you're ready to recommend approval, that'll go to council for adoption. And uh, you'll make that recommendation to council to approve the plan. Council will hold a public hearing. There will be <coughs> opportunity for more public comment. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and then eventually this will you know, get adopted. And once it's adopted as a formal document, it'll be posted. And then it, the burden is on the staff to make sure it gets implemented, staff and council and other leaders. So any land use decision, budget decisions, all of these things should reflect the comprehensive plan. So when we make decisions, we should identify how that decision is consistent with the goals of the plan. So that's one sort of direct effect. Um, we also, those action steps, we also will periodically review those. Um, some of those are opportunistic, like seeking funding or right. working with certain partners, you know, if you don't have a cooperative or available partner, you know, that might stall. But um, as those opportunities present themselves or, you know, things that we do have more control over, we would just try to keep those on our work uh, programs and just kind of keep chipping away at implementing some of these. Um, so I think one of the things that they're pressing on is even the rewrite of, of all of the ordinances and that. Yeah. That's a big job. <laughs> job and it's it's um, got a budgetary impact so that is something that would be discussed at the council work sessions and 
when we make budgetary decisions and we have to look at again at the comprehensive plan what's consistent with the plan and we can point to saying well the plan identified these things yeah, yeah. that might have a budgetary impact as our highest priorities so we should be prioritizing those in our budget um, so that's the kind of way we use the, that's one way that we use the plan or a couple ways that we use the plan um, in helping guide our decisions yes sir the, the plan, let's say a project is coming to the board, okay? My viewpoint would be that that plan, that project would already be looked at by someone that would be in charge of the plan. Mm -hmm. So who who will be the person or is there a, is that a committee? Is that one That's person? Ricky. It's it's um, in in the in the example that you provide, it's going to be Ricky. It's going to be staff who are going to identify how that particular proposal is consistent with the comprehensive plan. Okay. And you see us do it now. If you think back on some of the uh, public hearings that you've sat through, text amendments, rezonings, conditional zonings, things of that nature, uh, your recommendation has baked into it how you know you recommend approval because it's consistent with the comprehensive plan in the following ways so that's some of the analysis that staff will provide well something like this in my opinion is not something that it should be really a committee that handles because mm -hmm. then you can get into finger pointing as to who approved it who who was concerned about it whereas where you got a, a point point of point person that you can actually go to and say is this approved it's yeah. my point. So a comprehensive plan is first and foremost a land use plan. So your land use decisions are going to have a direct correlation with the comprehensive plan. So that is going to be the most common and frequent connection to the comp plan that you're going to see. So that, that is Ricky, Ricky, Marie, myself, we, we, we work in that realm. Um, but the comprehensive plan goes beyond that. We, we actually, the conversation about consistency with the comprehensive plan predates before you see anything. When we meet with developers and they have a project idea and we hear from them and we will have a conversation with them about the comprehensive plan. We will say, this sounds great. We love your proposal, but this is a residential project. And our plan calls out, and I'm just using this as an example, our plan calls out and prioritizes affordable housing. How does your development proposal support affordable housing? Or how does your development proposal support sustainable growth? Or how does your development proposal affect transportation? So those are the um, conversations we have with them to try to get people thinking about what is important to the town and how can they support these goals that are important to everybody. Um, and then, you know, and, and the plan includes a lot of other sort of visionary thinking and big picture thinking um, related to public health, related transportation. to transportation, related to um, sustainable growth, climate change, um, resiliency, community resiliency, all of these things. So uh, other decisions, like I mentioned, you know, whether or not we go after a particular grant proposal, how do we prioritize spending uh, money and capital projects? A lot of, we're gonna use the comprehensive plan to help guide a lot of that decision making. Well, I know my preference would be that we wait for the updates before actually, if, we're, if we are expected to approve it, that's my preference. Right. I agree, I feel more comfortable. I know we're, all, we're, not, we're not approving something, we're just recommending, I guess you wanna call it or whatever. Yeah, or yeah, yeah. But I think we should have the finalist version that's possible, the latest version, <laughs> before we approve that. So if maybe okay. wait one more month, if it's not gonna be a big hiccup for the council. No, I don't think it'll be a problem for council. I would ask that this planning board uh, prioritize and and it make it a goal to move it forward at the next meeting so that we can, you know, hopefully, I'm not, you don't have to, it's up to you guys, <laughs> but um, if we could, that would help keep this on schedule and, you know, get it in front of if council soon. We could possibly have the latest and greatest version at least a week before uh, well, a meeting. We, I think that's reasonable. And then we yeah. at least can, can re review review it ourselves and then we can discuss it and then we can move on like you want yeah agree 
I have another question of Shannon. Uh, do you see this section, though, the action thing, as something that is continually worked and redone and re you know, because it's kind of like you, you probably would be changing this a lot. You know, um, yes and no. <laughs> so, um, I mean, it is true a comprehensive plan is not static. You can update it. But I will say practically we don't typically update but the plan. But this isn't really the plan. Well, it's an appendix, so it is considered part of the plan. It's an appendix to the plan. Okay. Um, I think what is, I would say, yes, we could. We could update that. I would say probably wouldn't be every year. It might be every two or three years, something like that. Um, it, and it also, another way to look at it is, it is, it is a guide. It's a guide. It's right. not set in stone, so it's not that you can't, add action steps like i said we often take advantage of new opportunities that we didn't anticipate when this was drafted so yeah it, it just seemed like there might be things you'd want to add not just to the steps but even to the broader categories as you move forward with the plan but yeah it, it is i mean the categories are based on the the right priorities and the themes in the in the plan so we'll probably stick to those categories um like like i said it's it's you can update and readopt a comprehensive plan, but it, that would be kind of unusual. Uh, if you get to that point where things have changed enough, you, you may actually just do a whole new plan at that point. I think the goal is is probably about 10, 11 years to do the process again because it is, what, 2040 is the plan, which yeah. is about 16 years away anyway. <laughs> so we would want to wait till we hit 2040 to start. Yeah, there, there is, no, the statute doesn't dictate you have to update it at this time. It just meant, it, I think it uses language like it has to be current, something like that. Um, but they don't define what that means. But the general practice appears to be about every 10 years. And to kind of address your thought on those action plans, to Shannon's point, the they're kind of like a guide. They're not very specific actions. They're more like prioritized. Things of, you know, it's it's like how you. It's like a guide to how to execute the vision, and these are the areas that that we've decided to focus. And they all have time frames of one to five years, and so. You know, just doing the math on that, basically, like this is this is for sure good for the five years, and then the next five, maybe things shift a little bit or throughout. You know, but I think that they're they're useful as opposed to not having this appendix. I think it's good to have it there, so it says, okay, well, it's kind of like the now what? You know, to your point, of, you know, what's next and how do you do it? And this is just keeping everyone focused on making sure that we are building the code correctly, making sure that we are focusing on small area planning, et cetera. So I think as long as we agree, now if we, now would be a good time though, us between now and January approval, if we think that this is missing a concept, then let's get it in there. If, if it's, so I think that, that that's important. I think we should make sure that these are the right major areas that should always have focus. Yeah, over the next 10 years. How did you choose the, or who ever chose the priorities, high, medium, low? How was that established? I, I mean, I think it's a combination of stakeholder community input, stakeholder conversations, steering committee conversations, conversations with staff. I think okay. it's a combination of things. Biggest, which is the biggest, most effective thing is changing our zoning ordinance, which is like the biggest tool to get across the finish line. So that's a big one. It's a big one. <laughs> um, we, some of the staff feedback that hasn't been incorporated yet is to move some of the specificity, particularly in the transportation section. I don't know if you all noticed that too, but um, it's, there's some very specific policy or I, I keep calling them action steps because I feel like they're more like action steps and they might need to be really more, in, I think they might be more appropriate in the implementation section. Um, so uh, you might see some, some more content shifted to the implementation um, and the plan itself be a little bit more 
broad, a little more general. Do you want to, uh, is it easy yeah. to pull an example of that just sure. in general? Yeah, yeah you go ahead. Okay. If you, you can draw it better than I can. Where, I think I know where you're talking about, but I just wanted to see if I was on the same. Yeah, go. Um, yeah, so uh, we'll just pause here. Right. Talk right here. As, yeah, that's fine. Um, let me see. Let me pick a good one. So um, top right-hand corner, 2.3.2, partner with Buncombe County to add additional bus stops along Weaverville Road to make using the bus more convenient. To me, that's more of an action step. I think the policy should be something along working with community partners to improve um, access to bus transportation routes or to make um, these areas more comfortable or to expand the system, anything like that. But to be so specific to say we should add bus stops on, on a specific road, to me that's more of an action step. Um, now, there's a reason that this was included and that's because there have been some conversations with DOT already. We need to identify some funding and we need to, you know, kind of move that in that direction. We know that Weaverville Road is a NCDOT controlled road, so we've already have been having this conversation with them. But, um, but I think that's a little too specific for the body of a comprehensive plan. Um, another 2.3.4, support design and construction of new art bus shelters at all existing stops on Elkwood Avenue. Again, very specific. Specifically naming the improvements, specifically naming the location. I think I would want to say improve bus shelters um, or well, Woodford. yeah, we don't have too many in Woodford, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, but something along the lines of just, you know, making, making these shelters more comfortable or, you know, um, so there's a number like that, things about specifically identifying locations, so 2.2.1 on the left hand side, identify locations for accessible pedestrian crossings along Riverside Drive. I mean, I would like to see that be something more along the lines of um, identify locations for access, accessible pedestrian crossings along all major corridors to provide improved access to parks, trails, and services or something like that. Yeah, that, that, I completely agree with you on that thought of just in general, making it, making it the whole general point and not necessarily specific places. Because once that's done, then it's like you check something off the list and now this becomes stale and mm -hmm. dated. Yeah, but you know, and if, if we explore something on Riverside Drive and DOT says, well, we can't do that, but hey, we can do something on Elk Mountain Road. You know, we've identified this as a priority. What do you guys think? And that's a major corridor too. Maybe we wanna shift our focus. Or maybe there's a new opportunity because a developer is going to do a project on one of these roads and now we have an opportunity to make some sort of improvement that we didn't have before. So keeping the plan a little bit more general gives us more flexibility. And, and I think you're absolutely right that these are not policies, the ones I'm reading. In, so on transportation in general, when it seems like we're we're limited by what NC dot controls versus uh, uh, the town. Are are there you know is there just an overarching you know agreement or partnership or something that we can go to NC dot with that says hey here's what we're trying to accomplish in this in this vision here across this time frame and get them to kind of just assign someone to go, okay, let's go work through all these issues and kind of build a plan with them and see that specifically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we work with both the NCDOT on certain things, um, it, especially when we have a, like a focus on a Riverside Drive or an Elk Mountain Road or something like that. But we also work with the MPO on prioritizing projects that include state maintained roads. And they also help um, connect us to funding opportunities. So. We've worked with the MPO in the past, just this last year, and got a grant to um, to do a bike ped plan um, for all of Woodfin. And then we also got a grant, I forget from who, <laughs> um, to um, study greenway feasibility from Woodfin to Weaverville. So um, 
so yeah, we definitely maintain those conversations with them. Um, and it's wide ranging. It's everything from speed enforcement to pothole repair to, you know, yeah, accessible crossings and. Cool. Yeah, and that that okay, that, and that would stick more along the lines of what you're saying. You just keep these to say partner and not necessarily with who or even. Yeah, like, coordinate with doing. state agencies yeah. or coordinate. With, yeah. Yes, sir. One of my concerns with the plan was the fact that it didn't address the west side of the river like I thought it should because we have plenty of uh, citizens on that side. Mm -hmm. um, and I see that, you know, that's coming. Um, I think there's a great, a much better potential over there for development. The question would be how to do that. And uh, I think through trying to get water transmission lines to that side uh, because the developers, they're not going to pay a lot of money to hook, to, to, to run a line to get to it. But if we could get it over there, then give them the opportunity to hook onto it, I think development would grow a lot quicker on mm -hmm. that side of the uh, river. Yeah. Um, th there's a number of reasons why we're looking at you know, exploring opportunities to expand sewer and water service on that side. It's, it could allow for more infill development, but it could also help replace failing septic systems, failing wells, um, you know, giving people another option to clean, safe water. Um, we, that is one of the main things that we want to address in this. And I, I should say, it's not that the plan doesn't address the west side of the river, it does. but. I think that side of the town has some unique challenges and some unique opportunities that we haven't really addressed in the plan. And I think we could do a little bit more, such as looking at opportunities to expand water and sewer service. And I don't know if that's something the water board could participate in or not. Being on the board now, I'm, that's one thing I could explore. Is there monies available from the board to go with what could be um, mm -hmm. Come to my neighborhood. <laughs> we would love to explore, you know, because we have a water authority that's separate from the town, um, some monies that might be available to a municipality for improvements, um, such as water utility extensions, aren't available because the water utility is not part of town government. Um, but there could be other sources of revenue, and we've recently spoken with some of our state legislators about what could be available, how do we position ourselves to take advantage of that or to, to poise ourselves to, to receive this money. We've, we've seen and known other municipalities to receive public funding to help with utility projects. Um, we would like to know if there's a way for us to do that as well. So there, I hope that there's an opportunity to work with the new board to explore this. I, um, it certainly would help to have all of the partners, MSD, Woodfin Water, and the town kind of collectively going forward. We had, we had meet and greets on that side of the river, and it was sad to hear those people talk about they, they couldn't even vote for us. Yeah. And that, that's the type of things we're going to try to change. Yeah. And then through this 1931 charter that we're under. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Okay. Any other questions from board members? I got one more. If you don't mind. Go ahead. I'd like to find out how how in a lot of this are we looking at it being funded? The implementation pieces, you mean? Um, well, where's the money's coming from? Is it taxpayer based? Is it it's, grants primarily? Well, it's going to really depend on what step you're trying to implement. Um, I think a lot of this could be grant related. Um, some of it is certainly going to come from the town's general fund. Um, it's just some of what we naturally budget. So, for instance, uh, an update to the town's development code that we would contract with somebody to do that. We would just prioritize that as part of our budget. We do contracting work every year. So we're wrapping up contracts this year. So, you know, we have money more or less set aside for contract work every year. So we could say, okay, this year our priority is updating the code as an example. Um, 
would it be possible i'm just throwing this out uh i've i've lived in developments before where you had to buy in where you had to pay x number of dollars to even be able to move into a development can that be done for like the town of woodfin if we got new residents coming in or businesses coming in could they pay some kind of entry fee that would help offset <laughs> No, we want affordable State housing, is, Larry. Well, State I understand. Very, I mean, um, it doesn't need to be an affordable housing, but a yeah. ten thousand dollar project. You're, you're, you're describing something kind of similar to an impact fee, um, and the state of North Carolina does not allow impact okay. fees. Okay, answer my question. I did one. That's a good one. <laughs> Trying. Can anybody top that one? <laughs> um, Ricky, so we don't have any more questions at this point. Um, I know we're going to talk about moving this till next month but uh, i believe we have a public comment section we don't have okay so at this time can we open up the public? Oh, i had one more question just in general on the it's a quick one okay um i gotta <laughs> i gotta watch the clock too uh, in general on any of the maps and and boundaries and colors that you, that you set it, these aren't based on current land zone zones are they or are they um, yeah. Are these few? Is this future? Is it's, this as is, or is it this is, to be? So it is to be, um, but it is somewhat based on our current zoning because our current zoning should kind of reflect our current land use. Um, and but it is not limited to the zoning, and it is not the same thing as a zoning map. Got it. Okay. So um, it, this is the kind of thing like if somebody came in and said they wanted to rezone their property um, to to go from commercial to residential, I'm just using that as an example, we could look at that map and say, well, that's not consistent with this map. This map says you really should be residential. And if we make a change, if we decide that the map was incorrect or it was um, not looking at the right things or taking the right things in consideration, and we do approve that zoning, we have to actually change that map. Gotcha. Okay. So. so, okay, got it. So this is the more like the intent. Yes. The zones don't even match it currently, but that's part of it. Part of the comprehensive or the cute, ordinance re rewrite cute, or no? It, you know, like the the an ordinance rewrite could also include a zoning study that looks at should we change the zoning districts? Should we simplify them? Should we collapse, consolidate? Should we set, you know should we add a new zoning? It'll look at all of that. Um, you can have so we have two or three residential districts reflected in the future land use map. You can have a zoning code that has six residential districts that is consistent with the zoning map or the land use map. You could have one that had four that was, it, yeah. It's it's a, again, it's a guide. Got it's it. I was trying. Fun. That's what I was trying to understand was a little bit of how those two fit together. But we should be looking at them both back and forth. Okay. No problem. <laughs> hey, that's why we're here. Um, can we, I guess, open it to the public at this point, Ricky? And uh, can I please have the public come to the microphone and just speak your name and address for the record, please? Gerald. I'm Gerald Green. I live at 28 Eastwood Boulevard, not in the town of Whitman. My wife and I have owned a house at uh, 8 Pelzer Street for about 20 years and have lived there sporadically. Moved out of it the last time about two years ago because of was a bit small. So, and my uh, comments are going to be through the lens of living in East Woodfin. I'm glad you addressed West Woodfin on the other side of the river, but there's also a division that keeps us in East Woodfin from feeling like we're part of the town, and that's the interstate interchange just down here, which needs to be addressed more fully in the uh, plan. But there are a lot of uh, goals and policies that address multimodal communicate our transportation options and connecting the town but there's no not much of a mention of that interchange other than as an activity center and the uh, commercial land use that's applied there makes me think of convenience stores with a bojangles drive through yeah. or another hotel and even the commercial land use classification is uh, seems a bit archaic because there in a town like Woodfin to address the goals that are set in the plan of connecting 
that needs to be mixed use. And so a mixed use classification rather than commercial, I think, would be better in the plan and better address the goals or mesh with the goals that are in the plan. <clears throat> and I'll try to <clears throat> be quick because I want to get home and eat dinner too. Mm -hmm. There are a few other things. I, I think it's a really good plan. I'm on the uh, the town's uh, Parks and Greenway Advisory Committee also, and just to mention that Greenway should be looked at as transportation options is good. The, uh, the emphasis on multimodal transportation options is all good throughout. The, um, there are a couple of things I'd like to, to uh, address that I don't think are so good. I'm an old guy. When I look in the mirror, I realize that. And I think of uh, investing in your neighborhood and community is good. The uh, comment that limited negative and undesired aspects of gentrification makes me think that that's encouraging the LLCs and the investment groups that own a lot of homes on Pelzer Street are giving the latitude to continue what they've been doing for years, which is taking every penny they can out of their property and not putting any investment in it. My wife and I, <coughs> in the past, <coughs> excuse me, three or four years have been invested more than $50,000 in our home, doing everything from a new roof to uh, drying out the basement and bringing the, the wiring and plumbing up to code. And I feel like the, uh, the couple of new residents who have bought homes and on Pelzer Street are doing the same thing and that should be encouraged. We should talk about the life cycle of neighborhoods and how to address the sometimes negative impacts rather than mentioning limit the negative and undesired effects of gentrification, maybe there should be something about working with groups like mountain housing opportunities to build more affordable housing, doing things like incentives for uh, uh, Airbnb owners to convert their homes from short-term rental to longer-term rental would be a good thing. So rather than not, uh, I just hate the term gentrification because of what is, has happened in, uh, with uh, the view of it. And there are just a couple of other things. I think that are in it. The one thing I do like is the uh, the sustainability section. I think that's very important. Resiliency and sustainability. I think overall it's a good plan. With a few tweaks, could uh, be an outstanding plan. And one final comment is that having uh, led the effort to rewrite the city of Asheville's UDO about 30 years ago now, and having done zoning ordinances and taking the lead for communities from cashiers to the city of Knoxville. I don't envy what your the next step in implementing this plan <laughs> doing the zoning ordinance. I've always said that plans like this bring out the uh, butterflies, bluebird birds, the rainbows and the uh, even the unicorns. But when you mentioned uh, zoning ordinances, the clouds move in, the thunder starts rumbling, the lightning strikes, and it's not the three riders of the apocalypse, it's the four riders of the apocalypse. So <laughs> wish you luck with that. I'll put these in uh, writing and send them to Ricky. I do appreciate it. I was I went to a couple of the uh, community meetings and somehow this uh, fell off my radar until Ricky brought it to the Parks and Greenway Advisory Committee last month. So I appreciate him doing that and, and waking me back up. <laughs> Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. The work you're doing. <coughs> So, Ricky, do we need a motion to table this till next month, or are we just do a verbal? I think just have a motion to continue this until the January 2nd meeting, if everybody's agreeable with January 2nd. Uh, but I think date specific is what we need. Concerns with holding it till, continuing until January 2nd. Okay. Do we have a motion to continue this to January 2nd? So moved. Second. Second. Everybody in favor? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion is approved. Uh, with that being said, um, that's all that we have tonight. No, I st well, I still want to talk over your calendar. Oh, yeah, yeah, on the calendar. Yeah, I want to make sure everybody's good. So, we brought to Ricky's attention that election day. It's election day, and since it is a high profile election, we should probably postpone our meeting. Um, I know everybody does not necessarily. Well, how soon? Can we wait till next month to post this, or you need this answer right now? I think, Shannon, it's like, they, do they need to? Uh, are we okay or we just need a special called meeting if we move uh november 5th is that is that election day yeah yeah, yeah. not a good one yeah. should we just make it the final yeah. make it the 12th is that what your thought was or, or a different or well, shift a day how about we I'll, I'll ask the board can everybody get back to ricky 
probably like by the end of business tomorrow or so, send them an email and say, I mean, my opinion would be just move it back a week to the following Tuesday. And the 12th. That works for everybody the 12th? Is that what it is, 12th? That's the 12th. Mm -hmm. my but it is the day after Veterans Day. <laughs> yeah. That's probably yeah, well, November has like five I holidays. Know, so I it's, know. <laughs> Com combine November and December. I don't have a problem doing that. So what would the board, I mean, because we publish it now, that if there's no meeting, there's no meeting because we do it yeah. at the beginning of the year. So what would be the opinion? You want to, there's a lot of holidays in November, I'll say that. I, I'd say yeah, why don't actually, we why don't we move it to November 19th and get rid of December. We've got Thanksgiving. <laughs> 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 this year. I, Next year. It's going to cancel November. <laughs> It's a great month to cancel. All right, so it's just are there any objections to cancel November from the board? You could do later in the week, too. No. You could do instead of. Yeah, but then, oh. You could do like the Thursday, the 6th or something. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. 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 Yeah.